at his eye. Marinara man. <laughs> his eye. Hey everyone, glad to see you back. Glad to see you looking fresh. So, Mandalorian just ended. And I say just ended, I mean just ended. I just finished watching the episode. Came right in here to talk to you guys about it. Season was pretty good. I liked it a lot. I think it was better than last season. Some ways worse than others, I'll get into that. So, I want to break it down episode by episode. Give you my thoughts on each episode as it went along. How each episode played into the next one. All that good stuff. Give each one a score, and then we'll average it out. That'll be the season score. I think that's the most fair way to do it. And I'll adjust the score if I feel like the whole thing is is more than the sum or less than the sum of its parts. So I'll let you guys know when we get there. So starting off the season with an episode called The Marshal, which brought in Timothy Oliphant, which brought back that Western kind of feel that the show started with. I like this episode a lot. I think going back to tattooing all the time in Star Wars can get repetitive, but they really use the setting well in this one because it's a desert. Westerns are set typically in a desert, the ghost town kind of feeling. It was really nice. The whole thing wrapped together really nicely. It felt very adventurous, and it really kicked off the feeling that Mandalorian has where the story is built like a video game, right? I'm sure some of you may have heard that. Some of you are like, what are you talking about? It's clearly not a video game, it's a TV show. Mando needs something. So he goes to a place, talks to a guy, but then the guy will be like, oh, I can get you that thing, but first you gotta do something for me. A very quest-like structure to the Mandalorian. And this one definitely has that. He gets, he sees Timothy Oliphant wearing Mandalorian armor. He's, You're not a Mandalorian. And the guy's like, yeah, I know, I just like the armor. So. He's like, I need that armor. <laughs> so they make a deal where if we kill this big sand dragon, then we can get the armor from Timothy Oliphant. Episode was really fun. Got to see some Tusken Raiders in it. It was really cool. I really liked the episode. Give that one an eight. Great start to the season. Immediately go into episode... I keep wanting to call these episodes like episode 10 because that's the way it's set up. It's like chapters... The, the show tells us that it's like chapter 1 through 16 at this point. It's not chapter 1 through 8 and then chap, like book 2, chapter 1 through 8. It's all one structured story. But I'll try to keep it, you know, second episode, season 2, kind of like that. So the second episode is The Passenger, or Frogs and Spiders, if you want. This one is another very clear, like, I need this. Do this for me. Mando is like, I've heard there's other Mandalorians around. And his mechanic is like, cool, bring this frog lady to this planet, and they're there. So he does, he crashes, the spiders. You guys have probably seen the episode, it's really good. It's not as good as the first one. I think the fish lady, I keep calling her fish lady, she's a frog. The frog lady is, is funny enough, she's like sympathetic enough. So like when baby Yoda eats her eggs, it's like, oh no, but also kind of, you know, whatever. That episode was pretty good. I really liked the spider stuff. It was very cool. It was very horror to like give that episode a seven. Next episode is The Heiress, or congratulations, you watched Star Wars Rebels. There's a lot of Rebels play, not Rebels as in like the Rebel Alliance, but in like the TV show. I didn't really watch it. I don't know much about it at all, but I know people who watched Rebels were really excited to see some of their favorite characters back. I feel like the episode weighs heavy on you having that previous knowledge to care about these characters. So I really didn't, so this episode was kind of like a miss for me. It still was kind of cool seeing more Mandalorians, seeing how Mando interplays with other Mandalorians of different faith. So we learned that the way Mando was brought up is this strange cult-like fashion. So seeing different Mandalorian ways of life was pretty cool. The episode as a whole, the mission, at this point it felt very like, I need something, help me. And I was kind of getting tired of it already. So after this episode was over, I was hopeful that it would move on to something else, kind of structure which I kind of did in episode four, The Siege, or, hey, you remember that blue guy from the first episode? So The Siege is good, but it's not that good. Like, it's still Mandalorian, so it's still not bad, but it, it's just kind of whatever. I don't even remember why they were doing The Siege. I don't remember if it was that important. I think it had something to do with, oh no, the Imperials are there, 
but why did Mandalorian get dragged into it? I don't remember. So that goes to show you the quality of the episode. Carl Weathers directed it. Also, Carl Weathers stars in it, and he's and this is the episode he's in the most, so it all lines up. Director, actor, he's in it the most, but it's also the weakest episode. I like you, Carl Weathers, but I don't know. You directed the, the weakest episode of the season. I give this one a 5 out of 10. Excuse me. I realized I didn't give episode 6 a rating in the first recording. So I give it a 6 out of 10. Thank you. So we move on to a lot of people's most anticipated part of the season. Episode 5, The Jedi, or The Ahsoka Show. Because Ahsoka's in it a lot. There's a lot of Ahsoka in this episode. It was really cool seeing her in live action. I'll give you that. It's cool seeing her do her thing, do the Jedi thing, but a gray Jedi thing. Not the classic Jedi order, but the Ahsoka way. The, the arc that this character has taken in pop culture is absolutely crazy. People hated her when she first showed up, now they adore her. So the Ahsoka show is a really good episode, regardless of it feeling less like Mando show and more like the Ahsoka show. But Filoni directed this, it was clear that he's like, that's my baby. I'm not going to let anyone mess her up. People love her for a reason. I know why they love her. So I'm going to make her right. And he did. And it was great. There was a lot of great fighting in it. There was a lot of great action. The story was great. The lore was great. So I give that one a 9 out of 10. We're back. Mandy Lorian is back. We're swinging. We're doing great. The next episode, The Tragedy. Now, The Tragedy kind of kind of foretold the ending of the episode a little bit. But we get to see... Baby Yoda, who we figured out in the last episode, is named Goku. I wish they just named him Goku. That'd be kind of crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, Grogu sounds just like Goku if you're not listening correctly. But, yeah, the tragedy, we get to see him reach out in the Force. We get to see more of Boba Fett. Just a strong episode. Just good. It really sets the stakes for the final episode really well. It does still feel like a little bit of a video gamey kind of thing where it's like, Oh, we can go do this mission, but then someone intercepts and now we have to deal with that problem instead. As opposed to the different mission structure of a video game. So this, this show still keeps its video game kind of feel the whole way through. Regardless of what episode it's in and regardless of what kind of video game structure it has. It still definitely has that kind of feeling with it. At this point, we're starting to get into some strong spoiler territory. So I'm just going to drop a hard spoiler warning here. If you haven't seen the rest of The Mandalorian, if you haven't caught up, if you haven't watched any of it, I've already spoiled some light things for you, like what characters show up. So, sorry for that. And third, just watch the show. It's on Disney. I know Disney's not allowing a free trial anymore. But for like the seven bucks, just watch Mandalorian and then cancel your subscription right away. So yeah, back to it. Tragedy gets a, a strong 8 out of 10. The next episode, The Believer, who I don't know who The Believer is... I don't. I've, I've been racking my brain about it since the episode. I think it's Bill Burr, because I like to call this episode the Bill Burr episode, because he's the star again. Mando plays second fiddle in a show a bit, and that's one of the reasons it's not like an amazing show, because Mando typically plays second fiddle to the, the new character in the season a lot. It's another video gamey type episode. This time we have to blow up a base to get some information to find Grogu who in the last episode was taken by the Empire. This episode was another great episode. It was hard hitting, it was fast, it was fun. There wasn't much filler in it. We got to see some great backstory on the Empire and the weight it has on the people who used to work there. It was very intense. I liked seeing Bill Burr, I love the guy. I hope he comes back again. It was nice to see him picked out of the, the plethora of characters from last season and be like, yeah, he's coming back. So the Siege gets another strong 8 out of 10. So finally the episode I just got out of, The Rescue. This is one of the best, I don't even know how to phrase this, this is such a good episode. Let's put that as a baseline. This is such a good episode. This is a great finale to the season. I don't know where they're going to go next with it. And I, I'm excited to see where they go next with it. There are so many characters in this episode. But there's yet so many plot threads left dangling. I'm just going to get into the, the meat of it. So we get the whole group together. We got Mando. We got Cara Dune. We got the two Mando Lorians from Rebels. We have the Sniper from the first season. 
We got Boba Fett. We're ready to go. So we storm Moff Gideon's ship. We have a plan. We're ready to attack. We get to attack. We get to see the might of these new, these new robotic troopers, which are super scary. And I love the music that they have with it. It's very Terminator-esque, very robotic sounding. They have such force to it. You can feel the force. <laughs> Pun not intended. And you can tell that these guys are a threat. And there is a platoon of them. And Mando has to fight one of them hand to hand. And he gets beaten. Luckily his armor, you know, made a Beskar. Can't really take a hit. And eventually he learns that using his Beskar spear, which he hasn't used like the entire season, finally gets some use. And I really love, in my head canon, I'm like, hey, that's a nice callback. And a nice, like, reward to us Game of Thrones fans. If you know, you know. We get to see more Darksaber fighting. We get to see how Beskar and lightsabers can clash and how there was an actual war for Mandalore. Because before this show, I really didn't understand how there was even a combat between anyone and a lightsaber. There are materials in the galaxy that can stand to a lightsaber. And it's really cool to see, like, just a spear. It looks like a normal spear get to toe-to-toe -to -toe with the darksaber. You know, he gets captured. We get to the front. And then all of a sudden, like, these these robotic troopers are coming back. And, like, it it, it seems lost. But I, in my head, I'm like, I know there's something coming. Like, this is, the show isn't going to end, like, on a cliffhanger here. Like, the show is, it'll end on some kind of cliffhanger, but not, like, that heavy of one. And who else but Luke Skywalker. Oh, my God. I was losing my mind. Because an X-Wing comes flying in, right? And it's, as soon as I see one X-Wing, I'm like, oh, the Rebels are here, everything's safe, but it's just the one. And they make a point of being like, oh, great, one X-Wing. But I was like, the one X-Wing? It's gotta be him. Like, it's gotta be him. And he comes out, and he's just in the black robes, you don't see his face for a long time, but then you see the green lightsaber, and I'm like, it's gotta be him. There's no way it's not him. At first, I had some doubts of like, oh, maybe it's Ahsoka, maybe it's not Luke, maybe it's someone else, maybe it's, I don't know. Like, it could be any random Jedi, but no, it's Luke. And just thinking it out, I'm getting, like, I get the shimmy shakes. Like, I'm excited to talk about, like, Luke Skywalker is in this show. That's who Grogu talked to in the Force with Luke himself? I mean, it lines up perfectly with the movies where, like, Luke built a school. It didn't go too great. But he built the school, so Grogu must have been one of the students. Grogu goes with him. R2 shows up. It was great. It was so great. I say great so many times with this show because it is a great show. I do have my problems with it, but boy is it good. It's great, in fact. <laughs> so yeah, this episode gets a 10, no doubt. I don't... The emotion, the action, the fun, it's all there. I cannot wait to see where this show goes next. That episode sent me reeling. It's better than last season's finale, for sure. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm speechless <laughs> uh, at this point. So, you ever know the scores up? You know, Marshall's eight, the passenger's seven, the heiress's six, the siege's five, the Jedi's nine, the tragedy's eight, the believer's eight, and then finally the rescue's ten. The entire season averages a score of 7.625. So, we'll, we'll round up a little. A 7.7 7 out of 10 for Mandalorian Season 2. It's good. It's really good. I hope next season doesn't have the lulls that this season and the first season did as well. I hope there's strong, consistent episodes. I like when the show does video gaming levels well. I don't like when the show does video gaming levels that don't feel like they have any weight behind them. They don't feel as fun as they could be because... I think back to the first season, when he went and got that hairy egg, that was a great episode. That didn't have much weight behind the rest of the story. It felt very video gamey as well then too, but it was just a fun episode where you got to see him fight a hairy thing and you got to see Baby Yoda lift the thing up with the force. So you're like, oh crap, he is attached to the force. Like I said, video gaming levels can be done well. I hope it's done well. This season... Also felt a little like launch pad for other stories to be told. Like the Ahsoka show literally is uh, coming. The Boba Fett thing 
that Boba Fett's getting his own show. Like, this show does feel like a conglomeration of Star Wars, but it also feels like just a place for other characters to reach out from. So I hope next season Mando gets his story. Like, it's all about him the whole time. I'm excited to see where this goes next. I'm excited to see, you know, Boba Fett show. Stick around for the after credits in the last episode. The Ahsoka show... You know, I like Ahsoka. I don't know what they're going to do too much with her. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, make sure you like this. And I will see you at some point. Man.